In this video, I'm going to walk you through creating a GitHub repo that you can use to track your project. First, you need to create a GitHub account, and then once you do that, you'll have a GitHub site. If you click on repositories and then click new, you'll have the option to create a new repository. It's up to you what you want to call the repository. I'm going to call this sample project. Actually, I'm not going to create it here. You would create it here just so that it's a little more tied to class. I'm actually going to create it on the CGCCCS project. It works basically the same. It's just that now it's owned by CGCCS. So I'm going to call this GitHub dash example, and I'll add a description here. I'll just say example of setting up, actually I'll say a GitHub video example. And as we scroll down, for your project, you're going to want that to be private. I believe GitHub does now give you some free private repos. You used to have to pay to get them, but I believe you do get private repos, or at the very least, I think as a student, you can. So double check that, but you certainly any work you're doing for class, you want to be private. Anything you do for fun or on your own, I definitely recommend making public because then you can sort of use that as a resume and you can send that to prospective employers and say, hey, look, here's an example of the code I write. Typically, they're not as interested in things you did for class. So leaving it private isn't going to hurt you. And of course, you certainly don't want to make anything you're working on available for someone who tries to take a shortcut and just looks on GitHub for an example. So I'm going to make this public just so that you're able to see this. But again, remember, for your classwork, you should tend to make that private unless it's something you're going to be working on with multiple people. And private repos, you can actually, if it's say a group project, you can add other users to that private repo if you'd like. And then go ahead and do initialize this repository with a readme and add a get ignore. There's some nice example ones, so I'll just do one for C. And then you can add a license if you want. We'll just do the MIT license, which I think just anybody can do whatever they want with that, I think. And then we'll click Create Repository. So this will bring us to the repository's homepage now. So notice we have a nice URL. Anybody going to this URL will see any code we check there. The Git Ignore, the license, and the README is already set up. Now the README is an interesting case because if you edit this file, you can put things that come up when you go to the directory where the README is. You've actually seen examples of that. So if you look at the code examples repo, I use the readme files, for example, in the C directories. This is the readme file where it has a link to the video and then maybe a short description of what things are. And then the other place that I use readme files in this programming directory, readme, or these are all a bunch of markdown files that have all the links and so forth. So hopefully you've seen this before if, you've, if you're in my class, but again, this is something else you could do with GitHub and we'll cover how to write markdown in a different video. Okay, so here's my repo that I just created. So I'm going to click clone or download, and I'm going to take that URL. And here I am in my virtual machine. So you'll see I've already cloned one repo. And now I'm going to clone a second. I need to give it my credentials. And so now you can see I have GitHub video example. So I have some stuff in here, and I'll do the markdown in a different video. But for now, I'll say this, it's up to you how you want to do this. You can create a repo for each project, or you can make a repo for each class. I personally like doing it with each class because again, all the stuff that's related is together, but how you want to do that is up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and make a directory called code. So there are some pointer examples. So I'm going to actually just be lazy and copy that file to here, right? So yeah, so here's just some code. Again, how important is this? It's not important. What the code is, I'm just doing as a demonstration. And I can also, if I wanted to take some notes, here are some notes. This is a short file. And I'll save it on GitHub. So if I do this, if I go up a directory and say get status, notice that's not tracked yet. So I'll say get add code. So now I'll get commit. I'll add and there we go. So if I do get status, notice my local is ahead of the remote, so I'm gonna push. And so now if I go look at, or look on GitHub, you'll see that those files are there. So I'll make a second video where we do some just quick examples of Markdown just so that if you wanted to modify these files, you can. So this is helpful for if you want to create a GitHub site that has 
essentially it's a static website so you can put information there that you can reference i personally whenever i do a a repo i like to have a readme that explains what the the repo is for and maybe how code works and so forth there's a lot of really nice things you can do you get some documentation with your code so um it's a useful thing and we'll go over that in the second video